Hello there, Mr. Grin here. Hope you guys are having a good day. Welcome back to my channel. So, today, in this video, we're going to be going over how I designed my logo, an intro that you've seen on some of my most recent videos. Now, everything on my channel I've designed myself, um, so pretty much the logo and the intro is, is all me. So I'm going to go over my design process from sketch to vector design to animation, and yeah, I, I hope you enjoy it. So, without any delay, let's just hop straight into the video. So to start with, I had to do the sketching. So in order to do this, pretty obvious, I just got paper and a pencil and I, I just drew out designs. Uh, this took me a couple of hours and as you can see, I'm kind of procrastinating. Um, and I was originally going to cover this section in a little bit more detail, but then I realized that you can't see anything to do with my, my design in this. But basically, I just I just drew out ideas for the design and then I used them for references. sketch let's go over some of the AI uh, properties of this design so this is Adobe Illustrator which is a vector graphics software if you don't know what vector graphics are I'll just quickly go over explaining it there are two types of graphics there's raster graphics and there are vector graphics raster graphics are traditional uh, RGB pixel based graphics which use pixels to lay out an image whereas vector graphics use points connected via lines and are essentially just use calculations to allow you to render an image. For example, this square here is made out of four points. Therefore, it knows that there's a point here, point here, point here, and point here, connects them up, and it fills them with a color. And that's how you would make this. So that's how vectors work. Now moving on, I'm going to quickly go over essentially some of the design ideas behind this. So the first sort of design principle I adhered to was that all the, the shapes are sort of a similar width. So essentially I took this eye and I just copied it a bunch of times and they all take up the same amount of space. It's the same with the bottom row. They are all essentially the same width as the eye with a notable exception being this R which is the size of two letters. And that's because of a problem I ran into whilst designing this. So as you probably noticed the T the S and the E are all grouped together. This is because I couldn't figure out how to make the T work within the design. Everything else, including the S and the E, could have a blocky design, but the T, in order to make it distinctly look like a T, just it, it would have been extremely hard to implement. Um, so my solution was to split the T in half and place the S and the E underneath it, thus taking up two spaces in the middle, representing the two middle teeth. The problem that then arose from this is that now, instead of there being one, two, three, four, five, six letters, which make up an even row of six, there's now technically five, because these have been turned from three into two. So in order to make up the empty space, I had to expand the R by two, two spaces, which if I was to redesign this logo, I, I might try and come up with a different solution, but this is what I'm sticking with. Uh, I've got to stick with, you know, what I've made and you know what if I ever come back and improve this I'll be able to look back on this and I'll be able to say I want to change this there's parts of this I like and there's parts of this that I did not like and these are the parts that I need to change of the general composition and I'd lastly just like to talk about this bottom row of teeth as you can see the top row is pretty much uh, just solid blocks because it's the top row and it doesn't need to be cut however the bottom row because of the shape of the mouth is curved so they're all cut off at a curve so the way that was done, and essentially all the, all the letters were made through the same process, is they were placed inside of a semicircle. So you placed in a semicircle and then I used the shape builder tool, which essentially allows you to remove and add parts of shapes together. So for example, there's a shape here, there's a circle here, they intersect here, I'm able to take away that. That's what I used to make the shape of pretty much everything. Moving on from that uh, is the effect. So this is the grain effect. This is uh, accessed through going to Effect, Texture, Grain, and all this is is just a, a black and white gradient, and the grain just changes based on what I want. So once I added the grain effect, I was then able to sort of experiment with different opacity uh, settings. So for this, it's gone with Multiply, because this basically allows me to use the black here as a mask. As you can see, it doesn't appear on the black, but it does appear on the white. 
So yeah, it all just sort of disappears and it allows me to mask everything off. With this said, we can then move on to the design down here, which essentially combines uh, what I've just what I've just shown you. So this black is actually hiding a bunch of gradients, which are adding all the different grain effects. And yeah, if, if I took away this black, uh, the design doesn't look quite as good now. But with the black, it hides everything and it masks it off. Uh, the only problem that this sort of occurs is that I have to export it with this black uh, layer. But the good thing about that is I can pretty much just key that out. Uh, and edit it out in Photoshop, which is what I did to create the assets. Similar story with this, this is the background that's used in the banner and in the intro. It uses a light, lighten opacity option and a very, very low opacity setting to basically just let it blend in with this black background. Uh, and that just sort of adds a nice little void for my character and all my stuff to exist within. So this is the animation. Uh, this is using Adobe After Effects. Pretty much all my stuff that I work on is in Adobe. So this is all made up of different assets. And as you can see, you can probably notice these little squares up in the corner. These are here just to allow me to align everything. So I align everything with these squares. They get hidden in the final animation. And basically everything's made out of all these different parts. So we've got the eyes, the eyes semi, which is the eyes that are squinted. You've got the top mouth, the bottom mouth, and the throat. So if I was to move through the animation, you can see the eyes here. The eyes here blink, basically. So this is just two different masks moving up and down. Uh, hiding the eyes, which gives it a blinking effect. And this happens, I think, three times. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four times, uh, with the fourth one being when the face starts to move. So once you get to this point, the full open eyes are gone. So after that, you move on to the, the next part, which is the semi-opened eyes, which are basically just the semi-circles. And they, they follow a similar kind of rule. There's a mask here that lifts up and reveals them, which makes it look like the eyes sort of blinking. The eyes sort of just a little bit blinking open. And as you move forward, they, they slant down. Now this doesn't look too good, I admit, when there's no like motion blur and there's no actual movement. But essentially what's happening is just the mouth opens and the face all stretches down to reveal the throat. Which speaking of the mouth, these are the two mouth parts. Uh, there's a similar story with these bits where there's a mask basically. The mask just sort of expands and then expands fully so that it doesn't obscure anything. And then the bottom jaw moves down. This uses a principle called squat, so it looks stupid. This, this uses something called squash and stretch, which is uh, an animation term. I'm not some animation expert, but uh, you know, I, I kind of just go for what I've sort of seen and from the few tutorials I've learned, this is kind of what I've gleaned. Uh, basically what happens is it stretches to imply motion, hits down, opens, and there's also a motion blur effect, which essentially just adds an extra bit of movement to it makes it look like it's sort of a bit more realistic which is you know not necessary but i think it adds a little bit extra to it and of course the final aspect here is the mask on the throat which basically just drops down with the teeth uh the second part of the animation is this bit which is basically the void as i call it so the whole point of this is it's meant to be a creature within the void which is what the mouth and the face is mr grin exists in this void world full of grain which is all dark and black so what happens here is in the distance let's take the face so in the distance the, the eyes are blinking and then they move up quickly so they go up and back and then swiftly down as the eyes close and then as the mouth opens it moves towards the camera and actually keeps moving for a little bit because I like to add a little bit extra motion to make it look because if, if you know not many people when they move can sort of stop completely not many things just stop 100% they, they stop all in their tracks that's not really organic looking so there's a little bit more movement to it just as it goes here and then from there it drops back again like it did in the first bit the mouth opens drops down and then forward and you get forward which is, um, I'm not going to go over what four is. I just moved this around and uh, manipulated. This took me quite a while to get get right. Uh, 
still not 100% happy with it, but I mean, like, it, it works for me, and I don't think there's many things I can do at my current skill level to improve it without spending hours and hours trying to, you know, work on it. But the green screen here gets chroma keyed out, so whenever I intro plays, that's all transparent. So, like a green screen, you know how green screens are here in videos. So as that moves towards the camera, it goes transition straight into the video. Uh, and in terms of audio, there's there is audio. Play it. These are just sort of subtle rumbles because at the moment I don't really have a song that I specifically associate with this. That's mainly because half the time when I use it, it's gonna flow into a song in the video anyway. So my reasoning is if I just add this bassy rumble that at least implies some of the intro is interacting with the music and there's some sort of like feeling there as opposed to there being just no sound. Um, and then whenever I play music, you still have this bass rumble that sort of plays underneath it. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much everything that goes into the After Effects part of it. I, I'm not an expert on After Effects. I'm quite new to it. Uh, motion graphics is quite fun to design though. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the result here. Yeah. That's enough from me. Uh, I'll move you guys on to the, the outro of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I've been really enjoying making these uh, sort of design focused videos and I, I plan to keep making them. I've actually been thinking about designing a font for the channel uh, to fit in, you know, with all the other branding I've been doing. And I might make a video on how you would go about designing a font um, since, you know, might actually be kind of a cool idea. Something I want to note is that I'm not really a authority on anything. I'm not trying to treat the most recent videos as tutorials. I'm just trying to sort of show short of show. I'm just trying to sort of show my design process and what I do. I don't feel confident acting as if I'm a teacher because I'm not. I'm not an expert on graphic design. I'm a student. I'm still learning it. Um, so anything I sort of show you is just me showing off what I've learned basically. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please give it a like and maybe comment, maybe share. Hmm. If you guys want to stay up to date when I release a new video, why not subscribe, hit the bell notification and you'll get a nice little thing in your inbox whenever I upload a video. Also, I'm going to shamelessly plug my Instagram and my Twitter. They're both in the description. My Instagram's where I'm posting a lot of my graphic design stuff when I make it. So yeah, that's all for now. See ya.